Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of Graphotron, which is actually a mod that's been out for quite a while, originally made by forum user Olex, uh, but was eventually abandoned and it's now seeing a resurrection under the uh, guidance of good old Kerbal Tech, who are the makers and keepers of the glorious hyper edit mod that I use all the time to sort of set up my videos here. And yes, what Graphitron is, is it's, well, it's a thing that makes graphs in a Kerbal Space program. It's great fun if you're kind of weird and geeky like I am and like data. I like data. So <laughs> let's head into the space plane hangar and take a look at the one part that gets added into the game, which is how you create the graphs that you can then use out in the sandbox world. So let's just grab a random command pond to show size, scaling, etc. Pop it upside down for no particular reason. And then go down to science, where you will find <laughs> what is essentially a old fashioned calculator. Oh, it really probably doesn't work upside down. There we go, let's pop it there. Yeah, it's just an old style uh, calculator sort of model and this is what allows you to make graphs. You pop this onto any ship that you have, and it will grab not only the information on your aircraft that you're flying, you know, it's fuel, electrical charge, altitude, all of that sort of stuff, but it'll also grab a certain scientific instrumentation. It works with the thermometer, the seismic accelerometer, the, uh, Gravioli detector as well as the barometer. It's not really set up for the new things quite yet, but I, th I you know, hopefully that will come in time. Uh, this is a very recent transfer over to Kerbal Tech, so they've just gotten it working in version one of Kerbal Space Program, and so they're looking forward to adding new features as, you know, we move along into the future of this mod, which is great, because I'm just, personally, I'm just happy to have it in the game again. It's been a while since the original Graphitron was abandoned, and so I'm just happy to have it working. Hopefully more scientific instrumentation will be added into the graphing down the road. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's well the only part, so let's actually take a look at how this thing uh, works out in the real world. Now, I took the Aris 3A and made a grapher version of it, which... Uh, you know, just has some scientific instrumentation thrown on, some solar panels to, uh, you know, power said scientific instrumentation, and of course the little graph, uh, graphitron piece. I keep wanting to call it grapher because that's actually a program I use at work. But no, no, graphitron. <laughs> we go. So let's just launch this and show you how this works out in the world of Gerbil Space Program. So if we load, there we go. Turn on the brakes so we don't sort of roll down the runway a bit. And what we're going to do is start by turning these on. I probably should have bound them to an action group, but I did not think that far ahead. I usually don't. And then to actually use a Graphitron, you just right click on the Graphitron 2000 and you get the little show hide Graphitron UI, you click that, and we get, well, the Graphitron 2000. And this is a, you know, a fun little screen here that will plot a graph of all the information pertinent to your ship. And now what data it will graph is all of these. So you just hit the uh, zero sources selected and it'll pop up uh, this nice little, uh, UI element here, and this is all of the information you can record in the Graphitron. So you can do velocity surface, velocity orbit, altitude surface, altitude above sea level, dynamic pressure, uh, total vehicle mass, angle of attack, the uh, scientific instrumentation as I mentioned earlier, so we've got all four of those sensors there, and then also your resources, electrical charge, air intake, liquid fuel, and monopropellant, and that is what this can create graphs of for the time being. So if we select, say, the, uh, well, we'll turn on the four sensors. I think that'll be good. The velocity surface and what the heck the air intake. These will be the six things that will plot on this graph. Now, if you want to start it plotting, you just hit the draw plots and you'll see that we have all these numbers here. The, this is the corresponding colors that we have over here and what their general general information is 
at the time being. And you'll notice it's kind of a weird scatter shot right now because we're sort of standing still. So it's essentially recording null data just in this one point. And you know, if you know anything about uh, data points, that tends to get a little bit screwy as you just stand still and it builds up just random crap noise. Uh, but yes, and you can always reset the plot by just clicking that. It will reset everything. And of course, if you want to stop the plot, you click that there. And now for options on how this all looks and also how much it records, we click options. Now in here, we can uh, change a few options, uh, starting with use a large font, which yeah, it's kind of good to have the large font. It's just easier to read on the graphs here. We can print the min max values, which is what's showing right now. So like for air intake. Uh, min value is 0.37, max 0.61, that is what we're seeing there. We also have this print legend, which what that is, is right now these are just colors. We know what it is because we have this Graphitron sources here, but what if you want to save it as an image, which you can do right here. We can print the legend and it will pop it up over here. Now it doesn't seem to start unless we're actually recording. So there we go, hit draw plots and you'll see that we have each of our recorded sources here with their corresponding color and their description. So it helps if you are printing this image out, which is cool that it has that ability. And so it makes things a little easier to read. Plus if you know you close the sources here, you still have them all listed right here on the UI. So that is very handy. We'll keep this up for now though. And now for some of the more interesting elements here, which I like because well, my day job, I am a geophysicist. So I like having things at very high resolution resolutions, data points, etc. And what these are is essentially the resolution is how often it takes a reading. So right now this is taking one reading every 0.5 of a second. We can change that to just one reading per second or all the way down to something crazy. So like, well, actually if it's taking just infinite data points right now at zero, eh, change it down to 0.1 data plots are still going by quite fast and well maybe we don't need that much resolution while we're standing still put it at perhaps one to make it go quite slowly in its recording uh, but of course when you are actually in flight you're not recording as much data now at the moment we are not recording actually much data at all uh, the next interesting bit of uh, info we have here in the options is the actual data point count and right now we are only collecting 256 data points. Once it reaches 256, it you lose the old data. So once you get to 257, that first data point you collected is gone. It goes away. And so you can increase this to say 512, there we go. And now you'll see our Graphitron 2000 has extended because well, this is the full one or 512 data points now. And same with the plot height, we can make that taller. So maybe uh, make that 256, there we go. And now we have a much bigger graph, which this one, this is just for usability, the plot height, because you know that'll make this a bigger image once you do save to PNJ. Uh, but the data point one is really what's important because that is how many data points it is actually going to collect. And you can make it quite big, but of course, <laughs> uh, the bigger it gets, the more of your screen it takes up, which honestly is a little annoying, but if you do want to collect a lot of data points, say 10,000, ooh, that actually might break it. <laughs> let's see how many we get while it's still readable. Okay, 5,000 works. Ah, all right, let's, I'm, I'm intrigued now. Let's try this. 6,000, still working. 7,000, still working. I wonder if it just needed more time to load at 10,000. Hold on. Nope, nope, that does seem to break it. Let's go down to nine. Oh, that still works. So somewhere around 9,000 is where after that is where it seems to break. But you know, you could always sort of uh, pop it down to the bottom of the screen so you can continue to record those things, which personally I would if I was playing with this on my own. But let's just keep it to 512, plot it right there, and actually take off the plane so you can see how this all is changing. Now we actually have been... Oh God, what color is that one? It's kind of hard to say. It looks like the thermometer. It looks like our temperature is rising. That is interesting. Let's actually throttle up our engine, turn on SAS, and fire it away and start flying to see 
how these all change. So our velocity on the surface is increasing, uh, which is causing the graph overall to expand its extents, which is quite interesting. And let's just take off. There we go. And you can just see all the stuff on the graph beginning to change. Uh, where, for instance, we are going higher in the air, so the barometer is going to be losing pressure. Uh, we are... Well, we are moving, so the th uh, thermos th thermometer probably will be going up. Air intake, of course, accelerating. You can see that right where we took off. Air intake just shooting up. Uh, the accelerometer, anytime we turn, we are going to get some shaking and bobbing, etc. Velocity, of course, shot up when we took off. And yeah, it's just very cool. You can see all this information real time now. Of course, we are recording at one second at a time at the moment. So yeah, not exactly the highest resolution of data, but you know what? For just showing it off, it's perfectly acceptable. And I just love playing around with this thing, honestly, and seeing how the data changes as we're flying around, it amuses me. Uh, but what's really important to me is that we can actually export this data. You can save it as an image file and actually export this and then have it out there in the world. I'll actually save this image file before the end of the episode and plot it on the video so you can see that yes, in fact, I did save this out to a PNG. And you can also save a CSV, which is really cool to me because, well, again, I'm a geophysicist. I've got loads of different bits of software for looking at data. And it just amuses me greatly taking data from a video game and plotting it into real world software. <laughs> it makes me happy. I'm weird like that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a very fun, cool mod if you like having excessive data or if, uh, say, maybe you're role-playing Mission Control. I have had friends who have used this mod to sort of role-play a Mission Control uh, sort of... Oh god, I don't even know what you'd call it. They, they, a couple of friends got together and they did a mission as a team. One person being Mission Control, one person being the pilot, one person being the engineer. It was, it was uh, quite interesting and they used this for the Mission Control stuff so they could see all the stuff going on. And uh, in general, it's just a fun little bit of uh, extra information and data from the game. So if you would like to try it out for yourself, as always, I will put the link in the description. And definitely, if you are a fan of data, <laughs> which seems like a, a strange thing to ask people, do you like data? Then play with Graphitron on Kerbal Space Program. Oh, but yeah, it's, it's really fun, really cool. You can just you get some cool graphs out of it. And in, you can get valuable information. If you are having trouble with a specific rocket, you can see, you know, oh, well, as I'm approaching this speed, I'm getting more pressure and et cetera, et cetera. And it could be quite useful to help you build bigger, better rockets. And yeah, it's just overall fun. So go check it out and I hope you do enjoy it. And of course, I hope you have enjoyed this episode today and that you come back for the next win. Hopefully we'll be having a gander at yet another fun mod. I've actually got my eye on one that's, uh, they've said they're hoping to update it within the next few days. So hopefully that'll be good. But until then, thank you for watching my friends. And as always, have a good one. Now Kamikaze, oh God, or Jebediah. Poor, poor Jebediah. Later.